We are Catholic Extension, and we have a story to tell. For the next half hour and throughout this series, we'll share inspiring stories, stories of people who are making a difference in our church. For over 100 years, Catholic Extension has worked to build faith, inspire hope, and ignite change in America's most marginalized communities. All across our country, Catholic women are building and nurturing communities of faith, reaching out to the least of our brothers and sisters, and bringing the joy of the gospel to the people at America's margins. We would like to share their remarkable stories with you and share what inspires these powerful women of the church to look beyond themselves and to do God's work. Catholic Extension's Mission Committee member, seminary professor and author, Sister Katerina Schutt, spoke with us about the evolving role of women leaders in our church. Women leaders are important to the church in the United States and actually throughout the whole world. Pope Francis said that women are essential to the ministry of the church. In the United States, in the last 20 to 30 years especially, lay women have taken their places in wonderful ministry in dioceses, in schools, and in other ministries in parishes especially. More than half of those positions are filled by lay women and then sisters add another proportion so that in parishes, 70% of the staff are women. Women are, without a doubt, most essential to the church in the United States. I was remembering driving through these streets 10 years ago and there were small trailers, primarily. Uh, there were uh, dirt floors where families had a structure of some kind to live in. And uh, many family members packed, literally packed into those living conditions. They had no water and no light in some cases. It was very distressing to visit. And I saw there, this is real mission territory. This is ripe for the harvest, ripe for the planting actually at that time. As a missionary, I like to know that where I'm going, I'm needed. And I knew for certain that I would be needed here in any way that I could help. The people were very ready to, for something, you know, like they were ready to, to receive something and they were just waiting. And I felt that this is the right time to be here and to be present with the people. And they didn't know who they could trust. And we were trying to show them that the Catholic Church cares about them and that we are instruments of this church and that we want to welcome them in and walk this journey with them. And we were asking them, if we build a community center here, what would you like it to do? There are different, different needs. The basic needs, the intellectual needs, the psychological needs, and also their spiritual needs. So everything, everything has to be touched according to where they are. Colonia at that time was kind of a sad place. And I can say honestly now, 10 years later, it's a pretty happy place. It's much larger because of the programs we have here. Our people know one another, they interact with one another. And this center has become a second home for many of them. It's their center. And we tell them that one of these days, we as missionaries are going to move on, but this is going to be yours. And we're showing you how to operate it for their own personal good and for the building of the community. The title itself, Proyecto Desarrollo Humano, is human development. And you can't develop the parent and ignore the child or vice versa. And so it's comprehensive. We are all together in this and we will all benefit from everything that is done. The hidden tool is faith. The apparent tools on the surface, various programs. ESL classes to learn English, women's leadership classes to give them a sense of the dignity that is theirs, but they may never have even known it. 
or it's been trampled on so much, they're not aware of it anymore. Uh, helping the children do their homework so that the parents and the children can see that there's a chance for them that just because they're immigrants, Spanish speaking, poor, that doesn't mean that they cannot develop. And then they, they sew it together, they crochet it together. And we also have counseling for them. And those who need medical care get it in our clinic. So you put all that together, these are the apparent tools. But underneath it all, faith is the real thing. We've learned what hope is. We've learned to feel stronger uh, as women, as maybe head of the household, because there's many women that are mother and father here. And you, you see them, you see them struggling, but the center has made it possible for them to, to see that there's hope and that they can, they, they can believe. And so they start to, to build community among themselves, because that's one of the, the reasons why uh, we are trying to do this, because we know that the family ties are very, are very strong. And so uh, when they came here, that, that was cut. You know, they, they don't mingle with other people because they were afraid. But now they, they come together, they, they invite one another in their, in their celebrations and, you know, come together and talk. Pope Francis asking us to go to the marginalized is a very good thing because it, uh, it affirms our ministry. It affirms what we need to do. It affirms what Jesus is calling us to do. The community center and then St. Anne's Church, which we were able to build and pass on to the diocese, kind of completes what a, an ideal neighborhood could be. You have this place where human needs are met and people's skills are developed, and you have the spiritual home also, which actually grew from having mass here in our center. I've heard women expressing that now God is with us, like Emmanuel. <laughs> so I said, my God, this is awesome, awesome for them to have that feeling. I see the face of God very strongly in them. They teach me a lot. They're very patient, they're very generous. They teach me that this is living Christianity. So there is uh, 2,000 families in this colonia. There are many, many people who come new. And so the, the work goes on, so it doesn't stop. The light of Christ has to reach everybody. It is awesome. <laughs> As you have just witnessed, the church is present and vital at the margins where Catholic Extension lifts up faith leaders like the Sisters of Pueblo de Palmas, Texas. Catholic Extension supports gifted, dynamic women of faith all over the United States. None more gifted than Sister Mariana Kuntz in Knoxville, Tennessee, a religious sister who also happens to be a medical doctor. I'm a family physician, so we provide basic primary care, mainly to adults 19 to 64 who are uninsured. Patients pay for nothing. Uh, everything we provide for them is free. We do try to be a primary care home for our patients so that they know that they can depend on us. I've been a family physician long before I was a sister. I got my training in the Navy. I really feel connected to Mother Catherine in this work. She started her care in Dublin, Ireland, particularly focusing on distressed women. Well, you know, two thirds of our clients are women. At the end of each visit, we have the patients sit down with a nurse or another educator to go over their health uh, situation, their medications, and we try to empower them with some information and get them to set a goal for themselves that we can then reevaluate at their next visit. The quality of um, care that she gives to each and every patient, she is so very thorough and um, they love her. Catholic Extension has partnered with the Conrad Hilton Foundation to support an energetic group of missionary women religious, leading outreach efforts and providing pastoral care in 10 dioceses across the United States.
They're going out and they're reaching out to families that are no longer going to church, to young people that have fallen away from God. And they are allowing them to embrace the church again. They come here not only to serve the people, but also to bring to life, to new life, the churches in which they work and they live. We wanted to assure, and Catholic Extension wanted to assure, that these sisters really had a, a position and a decision-making role and an influence in the life of the parish. The Sisters Initiative has really become a dream come true for Catholic Extension. There's really something very special, we believe, about the contribution that women religious have in our U.S. Catholic Church. These sisters are coming with great gifts, education, ministry experience, and they're strong leaders. We learn English, but we also learn many other things of pastoral, things that they're gonna be important for us to use. We are taking this value of the gospel to the real world. Jesus is with us all the time because the message of Jesus is a message of love, a message of liberation. I always think of the story of Jesus when he looked at Levi, when he was there at the post, and he was like a nobody, and the tax collector shunned. And the scripture says, Jesus looked at him. Right there, he was converted and I think this is what the sisters can do. I really see it as a very scriptural, theological project that we're doing here. When they come as religious, they're gonna bring that spirit. We're gonna visit every family, I hope, listen to them and telling them that they can be part of a community, community of faith. It's amazing to see them interact with people. People just come up to them and just want to be around them and speak to them. Through their hard work and their efforts, they have actually uh, more than doubled attendance at our Spanish Holy Mass. They're responsible for creating many groups. We now have catechism in Spanish for adults and for youth and for kids. We also have a men's group in Spanish, a women's group in Spanish, a youth group in Spanish. When uh, they were at Walmart, for example, doing outreach uh, to try and get people to come to Holy Mass or our Spanish Mass, uh, they didn't even have to approach people. People just came up to them. They radiate. Uh, they are lit. They radiate with the love of the Holy Spirit. It is incredible to see them in action. This initiative is a challenge for the religious in the United States to see how we can as diverse religious communities work on the common call to the new evangelization and to the common problems that we're seeing, uh, especially in our day with young people. We really wanted to assure that these young, vibrant women religious would engage with young Latino women to perhaps be for them a role model in terms of they too could be sisters and they too could live uh, the dynamism of their culture through a call from God to, to religious life. The life of the Catholic Church is in the mission dioceses and Catholic Extension sees that. They have eyes for that. They have a vision that is profoundly innovative in terms of the movement and the dynamic uh, direction of the Catholic Church. They're going to awaken the mission spirit in America. They're going to awaken the gifts and the talents of the people that they work with. They are going to touch the lives of thousands of Catholics across this country. Their work is going to impact not only the hearts and the lives of their people, but we really believe that they're going to have an impact on society as well. All these sisters are going to be coming to be able to help our church welcome the stranger. Que yo pienso que es la fe caminar hacia la presencia de Dios y un solo objetivo que es poder lograr extender el reino de Dios. Catholic extension for over 110 years has been doing that. We've been bringing God 
to communities where there has been no support, no church. And the sisters are doing that. They're going out into the periphery. They are bridge builders. They are women who are dedicated to Jesus and to bring the parishioners, to bring the community as a whole back to God. The sisters are out there encountering these people that have in some way have felt distanced uh, from the church. So the sisters are out in the field. They are really out in the field. Now, the people feel they're at home. They feel they're connected now. Somebody's really out on their land, on their fence property, with their dogs right there. And, and they're feeling that they belong and the sisters are able to then to do that bridging with the rest of the community. And it's made a tremendous difference when you see the excitement that the people have, how they look forward to the sisters, but then how the sisters then build on that trust and begin to form them. Sharing in the mission of Catholic Extension, these sisters are shaping the future of their communities and collectively shaping the future of the church in the United States. Catholic Extension supports women church leaders who bring the love and teachings of Jesus to diverse people at the edges of society. Sister Margaret Mary O'Doherty brings a life-giving ministry to Montana's Rocky Boy Reservation. My name is Margaret Mary O'Doherty, and I'm in the Diocese of Great Falls, but I'm a Dominican sister from Spark Hill and working on the reservation here now for 33 years. And the tribe asked me to work at the school. So we do a positive action program, just kind of fitting into their cultural ways to try to understand who they are and what they're about. So we have to understand the heart of the other person, really. You know, you're, you're trying to help them with their spirituality and whatever is good. Jesus means a great deal to the people here. That's life-giving for them. In Bozeman, Montana, Kelly Ruby emphasizes reconciliation to the young people in her youth ministry programs. Teenagers especially need to hear about reconciliation and forgiveness because they, they need to know that they're forgiven. And I find that usually when they feel the joy that you feel walking out of confession, but then they want to go change the world. They just want to go light it on fire. And usually the first place they want to do that in is somehow in their own community. I think the more time you spend with young people, the more hope you have, especially if you engage them in a real and relevant way. Lay women have taken a much more important place in the church in recent years. They have a way of approaching ministry that I think has been extremely helpful. They come with a family background, which means that they know how to approach what the needs of children are. They have a sense of aging parents. They know life in a very different way. And I think that's been extraordinarily helpful. With increasing numbers, we are blessed with laywomen answering the call to leadership. One such woman is Melba Arbello, who started her mission as a parish volunteer. In Arecibo, Puerto Rico, she fosters an island of hope. Hogar Santa Teresita was founded in 1999 in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. It responds to high incidence in child abuse here in this area. When the children come to service, we receive with this thought, if nobody loves you, our joy is to love you. They come with nothing here. They have scars in their hearts. They have uh, dreams in the in the night that they scare, they cry, and we are their uh, support for them. 
and we start to offer all the services that dignify their persons. We offer nutrition, uh, education, medical pediatrics, psychology, uh, social worker, recreation and spiritual life. To see the smile in the face of the, ch of the children, that's for me the best. I think we all need to become more educated in terms of Puerto Rico itself. We have approximately 60% of children um, under the age of 16 who live in, under the poverty level. Within the past eight years, the government has closed more than 200 public schools. We have lost benefits from government programs. That is difficult for us because I don't want that the services, children's services affected. And we are working hard, very hard. It is a very difficult situation. Right now we have a girl that she does not exist in the, because she don't has the birth certificate. And I am very worried about it because I, my question is what is going on because maybe she can be human traffic. So I am start working with the senators and people from government to see if they can change the things to, to uh, limit, limit the exposure them to the human traffic. Aguíame. Déjeme. Amén. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo, del Espíritu Santo. Amén. They love go to church. It is the day that they are very close to God. And it, it is a special moment for them. I believe that uh, faith in them make a change, a transformation for good, to know what is love, and they want to give love to other people, to, other, to their family. We teach them about forgiveness, and that is important because they are very hurt, and they can live their life with these uh, feelings. I started like a volunteer in 1999, and um, I I like to serve. I like to be with all the children, uh, making transformation in them. They ask me if I want to be a director to work, but but for me it's not a work. It's more than a work. It's a mission that I have to continue. Nuestra congregación se trabaja bastante. Delegar en el seglar en quien también la Iglesia ha descubierto mucho carisma, muchas habilidades de legar en el seglar y la religiosa que sea la persona que está ahí para ayudar, para estimular, para orientar también al personal y a los niños. Y en ese sentido yo me he sentido profundamente feliz y muy libre también. Sí. Hermana Gilma es mi my, confianza, my she helped me in my faith and she, she, she support me. The first persons who, come, who start here was the sister, so I just continue the work. I want to nominate a Melba because, sin duda, no hay mejor manera de evangelizar que ser reflejo del amor y de la misericordia de Dios. No hay un mayor servicio que cuidar de los menos afortunados y demostrarles que Dios les ama y que Dios cuida de ellos. Y eso es lo que me lo hace con nuestros niños. As a Catholic people to to understand that there are bonds that unite us and that should strengthen our sense of solidarity and charity and diversity. The spirit of mutual respect. I believe in them. I believe in these uh, children. I believe that Puerto Rico has uh, opportunities if we extend the hands to them, because they are the future of our island. 
and I grow in faith here. When we are in peace, I can feel the God here. Catholic Extension awarded Melba Arbello with its highest honor, the Lumen Christi Award, in recognition of her leadership and her compassion. What else could possibly be done to give hope to the world than is not done by Catholic Extension? There are so many different programs and projects that I think have made a huge difference and brought hope to so many different people. Women of faith inspire hope through the many ways in which they serve the Lord and serve the poor. Catholic Extension supports their efforts in mission dioceses, where the church is thriving, but resources are scarce. It is an expression of our own faith to support them in their mission, our mission, to build faith, inspire hope, and ignite change. I hope you have been inspired by the people and the places we've shown you today. I pray that these stories will move you to follow the call of our faith, to reach out to those in need, and to evangelize by sharing the joy of Christ's love. What an exciting time to be Catholic in our country. Please visit our website, catholicextension.org, to join Catholic Extension in our mission of building faith, inspiring hope, and igniting change in mission dioceses across the United States. I look forward to the next time we meet here on Catholic Extension. May God bless you and all whom you love.